here we are going to start with something very simple like this bouncing ball to derive a quantity which is very useful in analyzing collisions and then we are going to apply it to come up with an interesting and fun setup here is a ball bouncing off the floor and uh, as you can see it is losing height with each successive bounce and you can see it clearly if you plot the trajectory so let's do that here is a trajectory and it is found that the ratio of heights of two successive bounces maybe uh, the 30th and 31st or first and second anything uh, h2 upon h1 is a constant and that depends only upon uh, the material of the ball and the floor so that makes uh, these successive heights to which the ball bounces up uh, a geometric progression and the decay of these heights an exponential phenomenon in physics the square root of this ratio of heights is called the coefficient of restitution e and this is done because the square root of heights through which a body freely falls is directly proportional to the velocity with which it strikes the floor conversely the square root of the height to which a body bounces off is directly proportional to the velocity with which it takes off or bounces from the floor these two things are not really different you can imagine them to be uh, some kind of video recording played backward so striking the floor or taking off from it is one and the same thing the heights and speeds are uh, related by the same relationship and therefore e the coefficient of restitution represents the ratio of velocity with which the body bounces off the floor to velocity with which it strikes the floor now why are those velocities important well if you think of it we are really looking at a collision between a moving body the ball and a stationary body the floor so the velocity of takeoff is really the relative velocity of their separation and the velocity of strike is the relative velocity with which they approach each other so this quantity can be applied to situations where both bodies are moving so this is a more general way of analyzing collisions we'll see about that in a different uh, clip but now is the time to apply it to come up with something really interesting here is the same situation again here is a ball we are going to give it a gentle horizontal nudge and it will drop freely to the ground it bounces off and then rises to some height let's mark these two heights the height h1 through which it fell down and height h2 to which it rose now we are going to do something interesting we are going to take this piece of the floor where the ball is expected to strike next and we are going to move it push it down by this loss of height so i'm going to take this loss of height and push this floor down by that amount and then the ball will end up not falling through height h2 but through height h1 again because we have made up for that loss of height and the next piece of the floor i am going to push again by the same amount so even the next bounce will happen through a drop of height h1 and even the next one and the next one and you know what i am uh, constructing here a staircase so now i am saying that if we have a staircase which precisely you know makes up counterbalances this loss of height then we can make this ball go on and on keep falling through the same motion and this bounces will become identical cycles can that be done well it's not that simple just try it at home take a ball or a marble try to send it down a stair it might do the first two steps or first few steps and then it will just go out of hand it will start skipping steps like anything so it is not an easy problem to solve so we have to analyze this using coefficient of restitution and come up with the precise parameters that are needed for a ball to come down a stair in a controlled sustained manner so it never skips a step let's see how so the first thing we do is measure the coefficient of restitution for that just drop the ball through some arbitrary height h1 measure the height to which it rises h2 take the square root of their ratio that will give you e then we can write equations 
that relate uh, the heights involved in a controlled fall. See, in a controlled fall, every bounce is identical to the previous one. And therefore, these heights h1 and h2 bear a precise relation with each other. The first of these relations is this, that their ratios is the square of coefficient of restitution. And the second is the difference of these heights is exactly equal to the step height or the vertical pitch of the staircase. So now we have two linear equations and two unknowns. You can solve for them to get what we are looking for, h1, the height from which the ball needs to be launched. Next, we are going to calculate the time involved in this phenomenon. Uh, every cycle consists of two parts, the drop of the ball and the rise of the ball. So both these times, t1 and t2 can be calculated. Then we can add them up to get the total time for a bounce or a cycle. During this time, the ball is also going to move forward with a steady horizontal velocity because it has no horizontal acceleration and it will cover a distance uh, that is equal to the width of a step or the horizontal pitch of the staircase. So we can calculate the steady horizontal velocity of the ball which will be equal to pH, the distance it cover, covers, divided by the time t. So this is the velocity with which we must launch it in a horizontal direction. And finally, the location. Uh, if we want the ball to land at the middle of every step, then we better start uh, from little distance behind it. And that distance can be calculated as the horizontal velocity multiplied by the time for drop. So now we know everything. We know the location and the speed. So we are all set for actually doing this launch. So here is the ball and here is our staircase. All things are set. Go. Bounce, bounce, the third one, and fourth one, and it will keep going. So this is how one can achieve this very difficult uh, but very visually interesting task.